Hello, it's Stacey from the Loom Room France here. Reasons to be cheerful. Now, I'm a weaver, and many of you will probably know that by now. And if you're a weaver, you need to have a place to indulge your passion. And what you're looking at right now is the sort of gallery wall, if you like, in my studio. And I'm going to give you a short studio tour today because it's absolutely tipping it down outside. And Olana asked if we would actually have a studio tour. So some of you may have seen my, my studio, but for those of you who haven't, we're going to have a quick whiz around my studio. Now, any self-respecting weaver <laughs> acquires a stash. <laughs> I have quite a considerable stash. Um, I'm trying not to buy anything new at all for the time being in terms of yarn, because as you can see, I have quite a lot of yarn here. And we brought this all over with us when we moved in the boxes and uh, and then had to organise it all when we got here. Um, I have a very long-suffering husband, as you can tell, because if you just look at the whole collection of the stash, that's quite a bit. Anyway, <laughs> so oh, let's introduce you to the looms. This is my teaching area up on the mezzanine level here. And um, I'll just pan round here to the table where we do the overlocking and I've got projects that need just to be finished off and I've got a couple of mending jobs and a couple of inspirational, a few inspirational books on um, the magic of M.C. Escher or Isha and Annie Albers sitting on the table there and some bits and bobs and magazines on the floor that I'm going through before I throw those particular ones out. And... Lots and lots of books of inspiration. Here it's mostly art, uh, photography, design, um, yeah, more artists. Um, and then we go across to the, the older stuff, the old books, old textiles books, and some lovely, lovely books down the bottom here on textiles in general. More old weaving books going over to the edge there. And coming up here, and I will introduce you to the looms. So these, as I said, it's the teaching area of my workshop. And this is, I've got three eight shaft looms. There's not a lot of stuff on my looms at the moment. This is a four shaft loom and it's ready for the boys that I teach. I teach two 10 year old boys, um, usually before COVID, um, in a class on a Wednesday afternoon. And uh, so I just take this loom, I knock it, to, well, take it down, it, it folds. So I'm able to put it in its closed position in, uh, and the stand in the car and just take a, a couple of boxes of yarns and things. <clears throat> this one, we, the next project on this is going to be uh, doing some raya and uh, various, uh, dis, uh, not distorted, clasped weft, some tapestry type kind of techniques on this setup. And then there's another eight shaft loom here. These looms are brilliant for teaching. And I should, in, in, if uh, if it hadn't have been for COVID, we'd have had four of us in this studio this week, um, doing lots of stuff and, and having a course, which would have been good fun. But hopefully I shall see those students at a different time and we'll just continue to have our fun, but at a different time. So there's a piece that's on there at the moment, a shadow weave. I've got some more designing I want to do for that and exploring. And this is the backside of my 12 shaft um, counter march loom, Lue Spring. It's got nothing on it at the moment. And, um, and then this is the other side of my lovely library collection up, up here with winding perns and yarns on the floor and whatever. These are all the sort of philosophy things here. Um, when I did my MA, had a lot of reading to do and this is some of it. Um, so philosophy of craft, and then we go down to the inspiration, bugs and insects, um, geology, uh, astronomy, earth sciences, fractals, clouds, um, oh, microcosmos, um, geology again, various places like Australia, um, the polar regions, the Sahara, then some text, textile inspirational things. And moving on, seeds, trees, flowers, the sea. More textile inspiration. Some lovely little um, printing blocks I've picked up from somewhere. 
more minerals, more wonders of the earth, more countries. And then other weavers books and my sort of regular weaving library. And then complex weavers down the bottom here. And then a couple of units which hold all the sorts of gubbins that you need for, for being a weaver. And there's usually quite a bit of that. <laughs> but I've also got some of my treasures here too. A couple of Laura Thomas pieces. Um, I love paperweights. I love glasswork. And that is also glasswork and it's beautiful. Then I have natural sources of inspiration in there. That's a butterfly in there that just died in there anyway, but corn on the cob. Various little bits, some volcanic stone, acorns. Little little bits from my previous parts of, you know, when, I, when you visited somewhere. Lovely bit of seaweed. I just adore the texture on that. A nice piece up here by Lucy Robinson from Ireland. I love this. I absolutely adore it. Anyway, so that's the teaching studio. So now we're going to pop downstairs. And that's one of my big pieces, growth form pieces. We're going to pop downstairs and visit the larger loom and um, Chloe's workspace and my, my lovely jacquards. So we'll, we'll, here's Chloe's loom, first of all. Chloe is a, a, a French student who comes, well, pre-COVID was coming every week. She does a lot of markets. She's a, a, a talented felt maker and um, leather worker. And she combines the weaving that she does here with some of her products and she sells them in the various markets around the area. And then there's my big 24 shaft loom, which is dates, dates from the 1980s. Nothing on it at the moment, but I'm surely to prepare and put on a, a rather large 25 metre warp. More stash. You can probably see them hiding in the background is some stash and some, some pieces that, oopsie, I'll show you in a minute some pieces that I've woven in the past swinging round and why on earth I've got a shirt hanging on there I really don't know so my jacquard looms these got shipped over by um, a removal company from the UK and um, they're beautiful they're from the 1880s and they're all different and this piece down here is one that was woven on one of those looms it's called Hummer Time. It was my response to Costa Rica, going to Costa Rica in 2006, I think that was. I'm the yellow hummingbird. <laughs> and I teach on these looms from time to time. Oops, sorry. Let's get rid of that. I've had the windows open and the birds have come in and uh, well, the wind's blown in as well with some leaves and things. And then the other two remaining jacquard looms. And then some of the gubbins that goes with it, or some more yarns. <laughs> Got my little silk collection here. And then this is a machine that you need to cut the cards for these jacquard looms. And then back here, I've got some spinning supplies here, including a fleece that I've got to go through and sort. And then I might actually spin. You never know. And over here we have some pieces that, um, well, they're all wrapped up, most of them. But I, I sometimes go out and sell at markets. Not often. Selling is not something I enjoy. And uh, some tail feathers from our now deceased cockerels. And yeah, so there we go. There we have it. And the warping mill just here with a dog blanket on it. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Sorry. So there you have it. Here's the Loom Room France in all its splendour. Maybe one day you'll be able to come and see it for yourself and experience it. And I'd be delighted to welcome you. So from wherever you are, I hope you are keeping safe and well and busy too. And I hope this might have given you a little reason to be cheerful. Take care until we meet next time. Bye for now.